Hi, welcome to Appetizer Cafe, uh, presented by me, Tara Graves, for the Washoe County School District 21st Century Learning Division. Our objectives for the webinar are to increase your awareness of where to find educational apps for your iPad, increase your understanding of what makes a quality educational app, share resources with ideas for using apps with students, and hopefully motivate you to explore resources further after the webinar. <clears throat> Our guiding framework that we use with teachers we call the six dimensions, and this um, one-page guide that we use um, is adapted from the Microsoft Innovative Teaching and Learning Research and the six dimensions that we use are as follows collaboration, knowledge construction, real world problem solving and innovation, use of technology for learning, self-regulation, and skilled communication. As we go through the webinar um, I will interject some uh, references to various uh, of these dimensions and um, you'll get a better idea of, of how they fit into planning learning activities. Uh, when the video stops, you'll be able to look at this guide um, a little more closely and um, just kind of think about how this fits with your teaching. So let's start with uh, what is an app. Uh, it's short for application, so it's a type of software that allows you to perform a specific task. This can be on your computer or on a handheld device or a mobile device. Uh, where do I find apps? We're going to be looking specifically at apps for the iPad or for iPod Touch. Um, basically the I, iOS devices. The first place to start is iTunes and that's where um, most iPad owners go to find apps to download. Um, but what you may not know is that they have these wonderful collections for education. And I'm just going to um, click in here and show you um, just a few of them and what they look like. So here is the For the Classroom collection and these are all sorted by content area. So you just click on the the box and it brings up a few of the featured ones but if you want to see all of them now you see apps and then they have collections down here um, below but if you want to just look up at the apps you click on see all and it expands it further and you can see it has the price several of them are free and you can see from there you can download it directly from iTunes. So let's go back. So that's for the classroom and then you can pick by subject area. Okay. The next one is uh, education collections. Now this one's a little different. This one has um, a variety and some of these are also linked on that slide uh, but they have the starter kit, which I recommend that you download. Um, just if you're new, especially if you're new to using the iPad um, in your teaching. So these uh, apps help you to prepare. Uh, this is an annotating and voice recording app, Notability. Um, Evernote is also for um, capturing all kinds of media into one place, into one notebook, and you can do it on several devices, and the, this is also free. Edmodo is 
uh, like Facebook for school. If you haven't checked that out, that's a great um, resource online. Class Dojo is for behavior management. And then some of these other tools help you to uh, manage and present lessons and then creating handouts with Graphio. So there's a lot of different tools in there. Explain Everything is an app that allows you to uh, use the iPad as a as a whiteboard so as you are um, maybe writing out a math problem and showing kids how to solve it you can record your voice as you are writing and they can see each of the things that you're doing. You can also import images and uh, do some diagramming. And then these other apps here are also good for assisting with teaching. Go back to that one, Education Collections. Uh, there's a special ed collection and if you see there are even more categorized communication, emotional development, sensory and visual perception, seeing and hearing and so on. Actually built into the iPad um, accessibility features are are pretty amazing both on the iPad and on any Apple computer where you can adjust the uh, screen or the print size and you can have it read websites to you. There's, there's many things already built in to assist students with visual or hearing impairments. And again, so just taking a look at, there's a productivity kit, creativity, lifelong learners, pretty much anything you can think of. Virtual field trips is one that you can take advantage of. Even if you just have one iPad in your classroom, you can set it up as a station. And kids can rotate through in small groups. So for different museums. Some of these are companion apps and uh, which means as you're t actually touring a museum you can use the app to um, interact more with what's on display. Others are actual um, virtual field trips. Okay, so just give you a little preview. Many of these are free, which makes it nice. And thinking back to our six dimensions, use of technology for learning is one that comes to mind because it's not very um, practical or realistic that I could take, you know, my students on all these different field trips in a school year. Um, but because we have this technology, we're able to expose them to things that we couldn't otherwise expose them to. So there's a Civil War Gettysburg app. So it really brings in uh, some primary source documents, images, maps, and allows them to connect uh, to history as well. Okay, homework projects, night sky, learning music, some things that are just tools like a calculator, a lot of wonderful um, options here. Okay, so we saw some of those already. Whoop. 
So just be aware that they have those. Um, and when the video stops, um, I would like you to pick one of those collections to explore further. Give it about no more than, I'd say, seven minutes, and then come back to the webinar. Okay, welcome back. So another place to find good apps uh, that fit your purpose would be to look at some blogs. And I've highlighted a few here, and I'll just take a, a quick look and show you uh, each of these. So this one is Teach Thought. Fifty five best free education apps for iPad. Now the reason why I think uh, blogs are a good place to start, even even um, sometimes better than iTunes, is because these apps have been uh, tested out by teachers already, and um, they also like to find the free ones because you know teachers don't have a lot of money at their disposal to purchase apps for their classrooms. So let's just take a look briefly at this one and again this one is um, for iPads and many bloggers that that deal with educational technology um, try to also find apps for other other um, platforms as well so don't uh, don't get discouraged if you don't have the right device that they're talking about because they'll have um, the same for other devices as well. So just looking at the blog it does give you a little bit of information about uh, what it's about but then if you click on um, the red here it takes you directly to iTunes where you can see it a little more detail for it. Okay, so that's Teach Thought. And the blogs that I'm sharing with you here are good to follow, um, not just for iPads, but for pretty much anything else um, with technology in education. So uh, you can find a lot of great stuff on these blogs. All right, Edudemic is another one. So you may see some duplication on these just because um, the good ones are always going to be uh, highlighted. So you can just take a look at those. Uh, when the video stops, you'll have a chance to explore a little more in depth. American Association of School Librarians. Now they do this every year. They have um, the best apps for teaching and learning for each year, uh, each school year. So if you go through, um, they've highlighted um, different categories. So book apps, STEM, organization and management, and so on. So some of these you'll see, some of the apps you'll see repeated. Um, but that, that's a really good source for you. Educational technology and mobile learning, another blog that I follow. Uh, a lot of great stuff, even uh, more than just iPads. It's pretty much everything technology for, for classrooms. This one's cool because you can um, see what, what your purpose is and, and filter the apps from there. So let's say I just want to use, um, I want to just look up apps for homework. So I'll go ahead and click on that one. And because so many of our students have their own devices, um, even though it says it's for iPad, a lot of these will work fine on an iPhone as well. Um, but they'll give you a few choices here for managing homework assignments. 
and again you just either click on the uh, the name of it and it'll take you to iTunes and you can see more detail Okay. next one free technology for teachers this is Richard Byrne he actually has um, moved this type of content over to a very specific um, new blog that's just iPad apps for school. So you can go through and this whole blog is dedicated to different apps. And again they give some um, description of it and then click through on the link or on the image sorry click on the hyperlink the image was in hyperlinked and it takes you to iTunes to go ahead and download it Okay, and that was that one, the iPad apps for schools. Appetic is um, kind of a, a neat site where you can create um, a list, so like a playlist of apps, and then you can just share a link to your playlist with students and parents so they can um, go in and download apps that they like that they know that you are using in your classroom so it's a neat way to um, make that connection uh, with your with your um, students and parents so they can keep learning even at home so this one is creating a playlist This next one is iPads for Education, uh, iPads for Learning, and this one lets you um, sort by category or alphabetical or by price, and the little um, symbols here show you uh, what kind of app it is. So if you just click on the image, It tells you what uh, grade levels are appropriate for and what are some that are related to it. If so, if you're focusing on the brain and you'd like to look at some other apps uh, related to that, biology or health tagged, uh, it'll bring that up for you as well. And then the last one for the blogs is Apo Learning. And this is nice because it also groups them by grade level and by content. And this one gives you a little more information about the different apps that they feature. So if you're really wanting to focus in on um, specific concepts, uh, you can do it from here. So it has screenshots, it has the score, and these are all the criteria for how they've scored it. So pretty cool. So don't don't get lost in trying to find apps on your own. Just willy-nilly and iTunes make sure you visit these these blogs because they've already done that work for you in curating the best ones uh, so when the video stops go ahead and take a look at 
uh, one or more of these blogs and then come back to the webinar. Okay, so our next uh, slide is going to share with you some apps for finding apps. So that's kind of a infinity circle if you think about it. So this first one here is Kindertown. And this one you can actually search for um, specific types of apps by grade or by age level. And let's look at free ones and search. So for these ages, these are all free and they're for the iPad. And I am showing this on, um, that you can search for it on your website or on your computer or download the app and have it on your uh, device. So I can continue to add things to filter it. Okay, and then you can go directly to uh, screenshots and download. Okay. And close some of these tabs here. So that's Kindertown. I'll go back and um, show you um, because sometimes it's hard as uh, especially when you have younger kids younger students to find ones that are appropriate for them and so this one's a really good one for those younger younger kids and they also have a blog So it's more than just an app, <clears throat> it's also the, the website and the blog that has a lot of other information as well. Common Sense Media has an app called Kids Media and this one we're going to take a look at their website in a few slides but this is an app where you can sort appropriate um, by age level you can just you can look at movies games apps websites and so on based on age ranges and they give you um, all kinds of information about um, different things that are coming out in uh, in the media and on this one you can put in your own children so if you have you know uh, children obviously of different ages you can put them into the app and it will automatically bring up uh, their recommendations for uh, TV shows, music, movies and so on. The Honor Roll is a very cool um, site it used to be called Moms with Apps and they go through and annotate different apps and you can also create a watch list so when they go when if there's certain apps that you want to buy but they're you know two or three dollars and you want to wait until they're free or reduced you can put that on your watch list and they will notify you when uh, the prices go down and what I really like is this top 10 reasons so that gives you a lot of good information before you go through and purchase um, certain apps so that's the honor roll and graphite is another common sense media um, resource and you'll love this because of this right here, the Common Core Explorer. And this is also available through the app. 
And if you pick, let's just look at language arts and let's look at sixth grade. It brings up your main concepts here. And brings up the standards. And then it tells me how many products it has that support that standard. So if I click the little down arrow, it will populate a list of apps, websites, games, and so on that will support that app. And what I like here is the teacher rating and the learning rating. So what teachers have rated it and where they see students can really learn. And it tells you what grade level, the price, what kind of, uh, what platform it, it works for. And I can click on it further, click on the title, and I can get more in-depth information. And then if I even click on this where it says read full review, it goes even more in depth. Okay. So that's graphite. Now these apps on this side actually help you keep track of apps that um, you are interested in that and or if you want to see which ones are going on sale for free or half price this is an interesting one it's called app grooves and what you can do is you go through and rate apps that you are using and it will also show you apps that your friends so this connects through social media like Facebook it helps you see what your friends are using, what they like. So if you are in, um, are connected with other teachers who use iPads, you can see how they are rating certain apps. So it's really like a crowdsourcing idea where uh, you're learning from each other which apps might be better than others. So right here, if you have these two apps on your device, it says which do you like better and you go ahead and put in your vote this automatically shares that information with everyone else who has app grooves and is connected apps gone free this is cool where it every day it just highlights the best free apps for the day So again, it takes out a lot of that work and time for you to go back and search through iTunes. It's uh, already done for you and it does notify you. So app price drops, there's another one. And this last one is App Shopper. And again, it just shows you uh, price drops. And you can create a wish list. So you have to create an account. Okay, so it's just a nice way for. Uh, you to have the um, the apps do the work for you and notify you of the ones that you are interested in rather than spending hours and hours trying to find ones that are free. When the video stops, I'll go ahead and take a few minutes to explore these resources and then come back to the webinar. All right, so moving on to our next um, portion of the webinar, 
How do I know which ones are suitable? With the thousands upon thousands of apps that are out there, and even looking at uh, blogs and collections and ones that are already curated, you still have to figure out which ones best suit your students and the learning objectives that you have. So let's take a look at some ways uh, to determine which ones are the most suitable. We've already taken a look at the kids media and the graphite, but let's go ahead and click on uh, just the Common Sense Media website. If you haven't seen this website, I highly recommend it. Uh, everything on here is free, um, and it just really gives you a nice um, one-stop shop to look at uh, all the different types of media that students are exposed to and how to make sure that they are picking uh, appropriate choices and share this with parents as well. Uh, a lot of great information here. So here's one. Uh, one of the <coughs> menus is best apps and games. Games that teach history. Okay, and so on. So you can explore that a little further uh, when you get to the exploration part. But again, there's a common sense. Oh, I did want to show you one other thing there before we move on. Um, under the education menu, there are some excellent resources here, um, not only for um, parents, but also for you uh, if you're interested in teaching digital literacy and citizenship in the classroom. They have a full curriculum all ready to go. Um, you can download uh, for you when you have an iPad, you can download these as ebooks, and there's a teacher's version and a student version, but there's also this printable curriculum here and it's all done for you. So I just wanted to point that out as well. Tony Vincent is one of the leading experts on mobile devices in the classroom and he's created a couple of tools that are very handy for um, evaluating educational apps. So he has a rubric which is here and we'll look at it a little closer and then a checklist as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the rubric and basically these are the criteria that he thinks are the best to look at when when evaluating apps in your classroom. So if you take a look at here's the top score and then it goes down to one. Okay, and then the checklist, these are handy to print out and uh, cut apart. And this could be a fun thing to do with your, uh, with other teachers in your grade level or your content area as you're going through and finding apps that you want to use with your students. And then down here is just a link to his blog learning in hand and you can read a little more in depth okay Kathy Schrock also has a, a rubric that is similar. I think uh, Tony Vincent has um, adapted his from this one. So it just gives you another um, resource to use. Let me click on the link here. She's got her um, iPads for Teaching site. And if you scroll down you can click on any of these to take you to 
um, more in-depth links. So she's got information, resources, and then tools and apps that go with this concept. So this one is workflow. When, when you get a set of iPads or even one or two, you do have to think about when you're having students use it, what is the order in which things need to happen or, in order to complete a certain project. And it's really nice to, as kids get older, to be able to figure out what their workflow is. Even if it's something that is uh, not a technical project or anything using technology, but just thinking about their process and the steps that they need to take. Um, this is under uh, self-regulation in our six dimensions. And planning the process and figuring out who's going to do what is definitely um, a great skill for students to have. And using technology specifically um, can maximize on uh, workflow and productivity. Okay, so our next topic is how do I use apps with my students? So it's not enough to just find great apps. Uh, you also have to think about how are you going to use them? Are you just going to put, you know, 20 apps on your iPad and then give it to the students and say, okay, go learn? Um, that would be nice if that would happen, uh, but that's not realistic. So let's think about, first of all, um, let me go back. Before you you look at um, specific apps, you need to start with your learning objectives. It's not about um, just you find a great app and you want to use it in your classroom. You have to look at what is your intent, what is the learning outcome, what is it you want students to be doing, what, what is the purpose of them using that app. Um, this is where the um, quality and the validity of using these tools in your classroom comes about. Um, it's really not about just having kids play on a device. So the first place we're going to look at is we're going to go straight to the creators of the iPad. So Apple has a wonderful um, website resources for teachers. So these are linked directly to um, the Apple website and it has a lot of great uh, resources. I'll just click on a couple of them. And it kind of walks you through um, how to find uh, content. And it does highlight certain apps and books. I mean, and it is it is the Apple site, so it is you know very uh, advertisey type look um, for advertising their products. You can also click through and find um, some excellent examples of how teachers are using the iPad in the classroom. Okay, so seeing how other teachers are using it is really helpful. So all of these are links directly to this site, but if you just go on um, apple.com slash education All the resources you can find as well. Okay, so I just wanted to show you where, where to find some of that great information. And back to Tony Vincent. This is a wonderful infographic that he created on how the iPad can become the teacher's pet. So I'm going to click on this image and it'll open up the infographic itself and we'll just scroll down and show you some of the really cool things that you can do with the iPad. Not just the apps but also um, physically using it in your classroom. So showing it on the big screen 
various tools for um, mirroring what's on your iPad onto a projection so students can see what, what you're doing on the iPad. So this works really well if you just have one device and you want to maximize the use of it. Here's some other ideas. So using the um, being able to annotate over an image, uh, either images that you import or take with the camera that's built in. Using uh, various notebook tools. This is kind of a funny, uh, fun way to use it as a document camera and there's little tools. I've seen people make these out of uh, you know wood and other things just by scratch but now they actually have ones you can buy so that it holds your iPad above something and projects it. Being able to walk around with the iPad and have it wirelessly project through your computer is very handy. So again, just maximizing the the one iPad classroom. A lot of great um, apps for management. So from Class Dojo, behavior management, making seating charts, recording behavior, monitoring noise levels having a random uh, name selector. So a lot of ways just to just to make it fun in your classroom. Also tools for grading, uh, keeping notes, tracking progress. Uh, different apps for um, interacting with students, so like using Remind 101 and Plickers, uh, they just these different tools to do some quick snapshots of, a, of how things are going on the spot, um, little assessments of, of kids, uh, what they're getting out of the class or out of the lesson. Uh, making games accessing your files from anywhere creating instructional media it really is amazing what um, the iPad is, has allowed us to be able to do as instructors Okay, so that's a really great, great infographic by Tony. Pinterest. So yes, the, please take heed to this warning. Uh, Pinterest is extremely fun uh, and extremely habit forming. Uh, many, many teachers are on Pinterest, um, not just for. Um, personal interest but a lot of for teaching ideas. So this link will take us to an actual search that I did. See the search results I searched iPads in the classroom and I wanted boards that people have created. So all of these bring up boards that people have created that have ideas for using iPads in the classroom. So if you are on Pinterest already, you've probably stumbled across some of these, but um, like this one has a great idea for storing and charging without purchasing one of those expensive carts. Just some different management ideas. 
And if you aren't familiar with Pinterest, um, these aren't just pictures. So if you click on one of the images, it opens it up bigger, but then if you click on it again, it takes you to a website where this was found. So the pictures are just like a bookmark for a website. So make sure that you click through to where you actually get to the website that was bookmarked. Okay. And then I can click back over here and open up different ones. And then again, if I want to read the article or look at the website, I click on the big image and it brings me to the website where that was found. So that was Pinterest. So these are iBooks and these are free ones and these are all filled with ideas for using the iPad in the classroom. So there's some screenshots and again definitely easier to view this on an iPad itself but you can also view it in iBooks. I'm not going to go I'm not going to open it there. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, open the sample. Okay. So it's just an ebook. It's an electronic book. And you can read it on uh, within iBooks, or you can um, just read it. You can download it onto your device. So again, just some basic ideas. Some really good uh, information in there. Another one is the iPad in the elementary English language arts. This one is $2.99. What's also great about ebooks um, as compared to like just a regular book is that they can be updated. So if you pay for it and download it, um, oftentimes they'll come out with an update so you get the most recent information. iPads in the ESL classroom, this one's free. This one doesn't have any screenshots, and so on. There's one for science. If you have an iPad cart, there's a book, a little ebook there, or iBook. Actually, before we go on, uh, so when the video stops, I'm going to have you preview uh, one of these books. So pick one that you'd like to look at. Go ahead and download it onto your device. Um, and take a look at it for a couple minutes and then come back to the webinar. Okay, welcome back. So this is an amazing discovery. Um, as I was preparing for this webinar, I found this wonderful um, collection of iBooks called One Best Thing. And these are created by Apple Distinguished Educators. So there are teachers who have gone through the Distinguished Educator program with Apple. And they've created these just little iBooks that are one thing. So it's a lesson or a unit or a best practice or you know some tricks that they've learned as they've gone through and it really is not just for iPad this is for any of the Apple products so keep that in mind but there are several that are iPad specific and you can also access these on a PC you don't have to have a, an iPad or a MacBook but they are um, 
they are the best uh, for viewing them, of course, but you can look for them on um, a PC as well. Whoops. So let me go ahead and click in here. And I just want to show you some of the choices you have. So language arts, they are all separated by content area, math and science, digital citizenship, assessment, content creation, and so on. Let's take a look at, here's one, iPad and physical education. And as you can see, they have, uh, you're able to embed video. These are mul what, what are called multi-touch iBooks. So here it says you can click through the viewer to access more advice for integrating the iPad and PE. You can click here to see some of the apps that, that this teacher uses in PE. Okay, so just really, really um, short books, but they give you just that little snapshot of information that, you, that might make all the difference to you. Okay, let me go back there through the link again. Okay, so if if you don't like any of these that are here, you can click on See All, and it pops it out. Um, this one's interesting. If Shakespeare could tweet, transforming literature with iOS. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Taking something as complex and sometimes confusing for kids like Shakespeare and using some apps to make it more accessible to kids and videos and another pro another app Puppet Pals shows you what products they used okay so it's it's really cool it it gives you just enough information without being overwhelming and it shows you exactly what they used and how they used it so when the video stops I encourage you to explore uh, the one best thing iBooks and pick one to download and then come back to the webinar. So we're just about done with the webinar and, and I would like to give you some advice and this ad advice I found um, on this article and I think it's it's excellent advice so all of your apps should fit on one screen meaning one screen and depending on the device you have and thinking about why why this would be true I've just shown you all of these wonderful amazing apps that you're gonna want to download and yet I'm telling you to limit yourself it's because you can get into a bad habit of just collecting apps, just downloading apps because they look cool or you might use them. Um, this ends up being very overwhelming not just for you but for your students and if you have too many they just don't know where to start. So you could have a lot of apps that you use throughout the year but only put on the apps that they're going to be using immediately that week. Um, or organize them into folders but let me click on this link here and the idea is that you are being selective and purposeful and so that links to an article you can read a little more uh, when you have a chance 
Um, but really being um, sure of the ones you want to use, that you've looked at them, you've picked the ones that are uh, a perfect fit for what you're doing with your students and the outcomes that you want. Uh, this is an interesting um, article, four apps needed to run a one iPad classroom. And again, the focus here is on purpose. So using um, explain everything or really any other tool that will help you to record, it's like a recordable whiteboard on the iPad. Um, having a YouTube account to archive and store those videos that are created uh, using Explain Everything. A class Evernote account, and Evernote again is, is the digital notebook that you can add all kinds of media to, images, audio, video, text, and then penultimate which is um, a sketch pad that goes with, it's kind of a companion uh, to Evernote. So thinking about that, really maximizing the use of these tools here, you could do quite a bit with just those four apps. And again, it's not about the apps. I just want to reiterate, it's about what is what learning do you want to take place? What is the outcome? Okay, so this is a great article for you to take a look at. And just some ways that this person goes about uh, planning for the use of iPads. And then this link here, um, I do another webinar called One Device Wonders, which talks about maximizing the use of one device. Um, one device being either an iPad or a laptop or a desktop computer and so on. So there's more resources there for you to take a look at. This is my slideshow that you can, all the links go through to different resources. And there is a Pinterest board for Appetizer Cafe and this is the link. So many of the resources that I mentioned in the webinar are here, as well as some others. So take a look at that. Here's our disclaimer. Um, again, with any tools that you are using with students where potentially their work could be displayed online, or they have to create an account using an email. Uh, really encourage you to discuss this with your principal, to be familiar with privacy uh, laws, and also make sure you have written permission from parents for use of any online tools or apps and there's a link down at the bottom there for you to explore. Also on our Pinterest boards there are some great articles that really help you um, understand the privacy and security laws for um, student data and so on. And if you want to learn more about being a 21st century educator please visit our website at wcsd21.com Follow us on Twitter at WCSD21 and on Pinterest. And I thank you very much for your participation today. And we'll talk soon. Please uh, email me if you have any questions. Uh, follow me on Twitter. And at the bottom there you see a link to uh, this slideshow. Thank you.